Welcome to the second part of our course on the good distribution practices according to the EU GDP guideline. Here we will discuss our interpretation of chapters 4 to 10. The documentation, operations, complaints, returns, suspected falsified medicinal products and medicinal products recalls, outsourced activities, transportation, self-inspections and specific provisions for brokers. Let's get started. Preparing documentation is one of the most important and complex aspects of implementing good distribution practices, also known as GDP. Documentation prevents errors from happening and records give evidence of relevant operations during the distribution of medicinal products. GDP is to be followed by trained personnel. As outlined in the QMS pyramid, documentation consists of a quality policy, documents that describe processes, procedures, work instructions, forms, records and templates. Documents and records are to be retained in line with national laws and should be stored for at least five years. During the wholesale distributor's operations, the identity, integrity and quality of medicinal products needs to be ensured. That means special care is needed to ensure that medicinal products are not falsified when they enter the supply chain. Suppliers must hold a wholesale distributor authorization or a manufacturing authorization that covers the medicinal product that is being distributed. They must comply with GDP principles and guidelines. Suppliers need to be qualified and approved before they procure the medicinal products on the market. The contract is necessary and due diligence checks, often abbreviated DD, are to be done to verify the suitability of the supplier. If you are a wholesale distributor, note that you must ensure the persons, for example the hospital or pharmacy staff, you are supplying medicinal products to, are also authorized or entitled to supply medicinal products to the public. That means you need to qualify them. Ensure that the arriving consignment is correct. Verify the received products are from approved suppliers and have not been obviously visibly damaged. Prioritize receipt of products that have special storage requirements. That includes narcotics or products that are sensitive to temperature, light or moisture. Transport them immediately to the appropriate storage facility. Regarding medicinal products that are intended for the EU and European economic area, check they are authorized for sale in that region. Check the batch certificate, for example. Generally speaking, medicinal products should be stored in racks and not directly on the floor. Only medicinal gases that are kept in cylinders can be stored on the floor. First expiry, first out, FEFO, is used as the guiding principle to rotate stock. If a product is near its expiry date, you should withdraw it from saleable stock. Expired products, products with quality problems and products from recalls should be separated from regular stock while they await final destruction. The destruction policies are regulated by national and international policies. Only authorized companies are allowed to destroy medicinal products. Its documentation is recorded as evidence. Why is that? That's very simple. These medicinal products could be used as falsified products by malicious actors and re-enters the supply chain where they would eventually harm patients. There are some controls to ensure that only correct products are picked. Firstly, verify the identity and expiry date of the picked medicinal product. Secondly, there should be a delivery note stating the date, name, pharmaceutical form of the medicinal product, batch number, 
quantity supplied, name and address of the supplier, name and delivery address, as well as transport and storage conditions. All documentation should be maintained during the product life cycle. The export of medicinal products to third countries is also considered a wholesale distribution activity. Therefore, you need a wholesale distribution authorization or a marketing authorization. However, to export, you do not need to be covered by a marketing authorization of the European Union or one of its member states. It is crucial to ensure that any of these products reach the EU market. So let's recap the requirements for exporting. If you export a medicinal product from an EU country to another EU country, the GDP apply. If you export a medicinal product from an EU country to a country outside of the EU, the GDP also apply. If you export a medicinal product from a country outside of the EU to another country outside of the EU, the GDP does not apply. If you export a medicinal product from a country outside of the EU to an EU country, marketing authorization applies and a qualified person needs to certify the batch. You should have records and SOPs meaning standard operating procedures for the management of complaints, returns, suspected falsified medicinal products and recalls. Returned medicinal products can be returned to saleable stock if a competent person conducts an assessment and approves the return product for resale. In the complaints procedure, the first thing is to register the original complaint details. A complaint can be related to the quality or to the distribution of the medicinal product. If it is a problem related to quality, inform the manufacturer or the marketing authorization holder promptly. At the same time, the organization should start an investigation with sufficient support to identify the root cause and apply COPAs. For example, let's say a temperature excursion occurs during distribution. You then need to ask the manufacturer to make the stability date available for the assessment. Any return medicinal product is assessed using a risk-based approach, taking into account the storage conditions and the time elapsed since the product was dispatched. The product can only be returned with a delivery note. The packaging should be examined by a competent person to check that the product is in good condition and is in its original packaging. The product should not be expired or recalled. The return should be done within an acceptable time frame. 10 days is acceptable according to the GDP. You will also need recorded evidence that the return product has been transported, stored, and handled according to its storage requirements. If the returned product turns out to be stolen product, then it cannot be returned to saleable stock. If a product is falsified or suspected of being falsified, then you must follow the falsified medicines directive and immediately inform the competent authority and the marketing authorization holder. The product should be segregated and stored in a controlled area away from sealable stock. The next step is to start an investigation and record all activities and evidence. The management of product recalls is to be described in a procedure. The efficacy of this procedure should be evaluated at least annually. All operations should be recorded contemporaneously and be ready for inspection when needed. The final recall report should collect all evidence. Many transport services and other activities are usually carried out by external logistics service providers in the distribution of medicinal products. 
a written contract or technical quality agreement between the contract giver and the contract acceptor covers the duties of each party according to the principles and guidelines of GDP. The contract acceptor should provide the premises, equipment, procedures, knowledge, experience and competent personnel. Self-inspections should be conducted by competent company personnel to monitor implementation and compliance with GDP principles. Independent external consultants can also be contracted to perform audits, although self-inspections should be covered by internal personnel. In the event that deficiencies are observed, their cause should be investigated and appropriate CAPAs should be documented and followed up. The wholesale distributor should guarantee that the medicinal products are protected from breakage, adulteration and theft. Having evidence is critical to ensure that medicinal products have not been exposed to conditions that could impact their quality and integrity. Storage conditions, such as temperature and light, should be maintained within the established acceptance criteria. If not, a deviation should be recorded and the temperature excursion should be investigated. The common standard transport ranges for all transport modes are cold, controlled room temperature, extended room temperature, and frozen. The containers, packaging, and labeling protect medicinal products from external influences, including contamination. There are different types of containers and packaging systems depending on their needed use. The labels should provide information about the contents, the source, sufficient information on handling and storage requirements, and precautions for handling. Passive shipping systems are used as a cost-effective method for offering temperature protection throughout the cold chain. These systems protect the product temperature using qualified shipping systems composed of insulation materials. There are no electrical or mechanical engines that are used to create a certain temperature controlled environment with this. This protection is usually a mixture of water and ice or dry ice, like gel packs, ice packs or phase change elements. This allows the product to be supplied in a temperature environment different from the temperature of the product. Active shipping systems are containers designed and approved to hold specific temperature ranges without significant deviations. They are equipped with temperature sensitive alarms that inform when there is a temperature excursion. These systems are more secure than passive shipping systems because the containers are never open during transport. The following graphic shows how passive shipping systems can be used in combination with active shipping systems. Insulated covers can protect the product during the overloading procedures between two temperature-controlled environments. The insulated covers ensure that the temperature fluctuations are limited to a minimum. The temperature of the product stays steady, increasing the quality of the goods. These systems should be qualified before use by performing a temperature mapping and a proper risk assessment to identify any critical points. If cool packs are used, beware they do not come in direct contact with the product to protect it from freezing. Regarding vehicles, the temperature monitoring equipment should be maintained and calibrated at regular intervals. Temperature mapping should be carried out regularly, especially to take into account seasonal temperature variations. The risk factors that have the greatest potential impact on the distribution of medicinal products are related to logistics and security. The risk of falsified medicines entering the legal supply chain is the most important one. 
Logistics is all about managing the flow of materials and information from source to customer across the entire range of material handling and movement functions. The distribution of narcotics, psychotropic substances, highly active and radioactive materials is another risk. Thank you for attending this course. I hope you find it useful and that you have learned what you expected. See you in other courses at SciLife Academy to continue your learning journey.